Purchasing a brand new MacBook is daunting with so many different options and questions that you need to answer. Do I need to upgrade RAM? Maybe I need to upgrade storage. Or do I want a MacBook Pro instead of a MacBook Air? Well, I've tried basically every shape and size MacBook that's available right now. I'm gonna break it down so that you can make the best purchasing decision for yourself from the MacBook to the upgrade options and the accessories. Apple currently sells two laptops, a MacBook Air and a MacBook Pro. Both of these laptops come in different sizes, but we'll talk about the screen sizes a little bit later and how they could potentially impact your experience. First, the M4 MacBook Air. This is Apple's cheapest laptop. It's thin and light, comes in nice pretty colors, and honestly, I think it's perfect for 95% of people looking for a laptop. It's got everything you could need in it. It's probably the thinnest you could make a laptop without major compromises to any other functionality. It's literally a slab. It's fanless, so it doesn't ever make noise. It has a MagSafe port for magnetic charging, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a headphone jack, and the trackpad, keyboard, and speakers are all pretty good for a laptop this size. The screen is good, but competitors are starting to outshine it. But it's not terrible either. With the MacBook Air, you get a pretty competent machine that can already mostly do it all. Gaming still isn't great, but that's more of a Mac OS issue than an M4 MacBook Air issue. Take this from someone who thought they could use faster and faster Macs. I used a much beefier MacBook Pro, but then I downgraded to the MacBook Air as my main machine because it already did everything that I needed it to do. If you're looking for a MacBook, the MacBook Air is the gold standard. It's just that good. There's not many other reasons to look beyond the MacBook Air. But you know, we all get curious eyes. You might think, but Jimmy, I want the extra power. I don't care if my wallet cries. Then let's talk about the next model up the M4 MacBook Pro. This is what would happen if the MacBook Air started working out. It's wider, heavier, and taller than the MacBook Air, and you can feel it when you're holding it in your hands. It doesn't come in any fun colors anymore, and instead comes in silver or dark, 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 dark gray. You now get a Thunderbolt 5 port, HDMI, and SD card slot added to the right-hand side, giving you more versatility in ports and things that you can directly connect to it. The screen is a nicer 120 hertz mini LED display, and you get better sounding speakers too. Also, the MacBook Pro has a larger battery, giving it longer battery life than the MacBook Air. That being said though, the Air already has great battery life, but the Pros, they're next level. But what stands out about the MacBook Pro is that unlike the MacBook Air, the Pro can be spec'd to be a little bit more expensive than the MacBook Air, to costing over $7,000. So you can tell there are lots of price points between being in the 1000s all the way up to the $7,000 price range. But let's break that down. The Pro has three major performance tiers for it. There's the bog standard M4 MacBook Pro, which has very similar performance to an M4 MacBook Air, but with better cooling since there's actually a fan built into the MacBook Pro. But really, these fans only kick in if you're pushing the laptop hard. Then there's the M4 Pro MacBook Pro and M4 Max MacBook Pro. I know, I know, the, these names are starting to become tongue twisters. You have no idea how many takes I had to make to get that little bit correct. These are beefier and beefier versions of the MacBook Pro that you look at to oogle at the crazy specs and the crazy price. But in reality, depending on your usage, they might be completely overkill. So in terms of Apple's chips, think of it like this. The M4 is great. The M4 Pro is excellent and the M4 Max is straight up ridiculous. If I had a general recommendation, it'd be that if you're buying a MacBook and don't know what chip you need, chances are you don't need the Max. The regular M4 is perfect for 95% of people. Take it from personal experience, I own and use for the last year an M3 Max MacBook Pro. This is the model that came out right before the M4 Max. I never, never, use all of its performance. The Max is really for someone who needs it for graphically intense jobs, games, or AI models. For us regular folks, the M4 or M4 Pro is plenty fast to get the job done. Just keep in mind that each chip also provides some limitations on how many external monitors that you can plug into it, which only really matters if you like a million different screens with power cables everywhere, but you do you. But you know, that's a great lead up to our next topic. Screens. Both the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro offer two versions, a smaller 13 or 14 inch version, or a version about two inches larger. But the main differences between the small versions and their larger counterparts are that the screen and body are larger and the batteries are larger to power those bigger screens and fit in that body. And they also have chips that are slightly faster than their smaller siblings. You can upgrade the smaller versions to these chips too if you want, but the performance bump isn't massive. But I think the bigger question you might have is, should you get the larger version? On the smaller laptops, it's difficult to have two windows open at once comfortably. With the larger screen sizes, I can occasionally 
fit two windows on the screen at once, but not all the time. So I think the value in getting the larger displays is if you're the type of person that constantly works away from a desk and are mobile, because if you're at a desk, regardless of screen size, you can just plug in monitors and get way more screen real estate that way. So get the smaller 13 or 14 inch if you like having a portable laptop, but are fine with plugging in at a desk when you need extra screen real estate. And if you're not, get the larger one if you're the type that only works off a MacBook and are constantly on the move. You might not think the size and weight in increase matters all too much, but you will feel a difference because I know I do when they sit in my backpack. All right, let's move on to upgrades. If you're planning on buying at your local Best Buy or other electronic stores, your options are a little bit limited. They only keep select models with specific upgrades available. But on the bright side, you're more likely to find a deal that way with some configurations available for hundreds of dollars off. The other option is to buy directly from Apple at full price and select the exact configuration that you want. Apple charges abhorrent prices for their upgrades that would have other manufacturers salivating at the idea of earning so much off their own computers. So to make good use of your money, you need to prioritize any remaining budget here to maximize your value on these upgrades. Most models have some pretty similar upgrade paths. You can upgrade the chip, which generally I don't think is a good spend as the base model chip is fantastic already. But if you want to upgrade to the Pro or Max chip on the MacBook Pro, you can. Just keep in mind that oftentimes you'll be upgrading other specs too, like RAM or storage in order to get that higher performing chip chip, so pricing adds up fast. And the MacBook Pro has this nano texture display option that cuts down on glare and reflections for $150. Now, this is more of a personal preference if that's kind of your thing. As for the MacBook Air, there's not really much chip upgrades available other than that slightly faster M4, which I don't think is worth it. For RAM, most people will be fine with just the default 16 gigabytes of RAM. But if you're the type to have a bunch of things open at once, video or photo edit, play games, or run AI models, you would benefit from upgrading your RAM a little bit. Make the right choice when it comes to RAM because this is something that you can't upgrade later on these machines. So whatever you decide to buy, you're stuck with unless you wanna buy a brand new laptop to replace it. As for storage, well, this one's a little tricky. Apple by default doesn't provide that much storage for their laptops. And if you don't mind plugging in external SSDs into your laptop when you need to access large files, I highly recommend going that route. Apple charges an arm and a leg for storage options when you can just get a nice external SSD for way less. And in seven years, when you need to upgrade and get a new laptop, you can still use that exact same SSD on your brand new laptop too. You're not tying your storage to the laptop and that could, well, save you money with your current and future laptop purchases. To be fair, it's a bit inconvenient to have something separate from your laptop and external SSDs are typically not as fast as the storage drive built into your laptop, but they're still plenty fast. That being said though, because it is external, it is technically another potential point of failure. Okay. So far, we talked a lot about brand new laptop offerings, but I also wanna shine a spotlight on refurbished models. See, Apple has a refurbished store at the very bottom of their website where they sell like new refurbished products, including MacBooks. And sometimes you can find a great deal on last year's models or sometimes even current year models. So I definitely recommend that approach if you're looking for more budget friendly options. So these refurbished models also have a pretty decent warranty on them, like a brand new product, and you can even purchase Apple Care for them. And if you're a student, Apple offers education pricing on their computers. You just have to click on the button all the way at the bottom of their website. I'm starting to see a trend here. I think if you want any kind of deal, you have to scroll to the bottom of Apple's website where nobody looks. And sometimes you can get Apple gift cards along with your purchase during times like summer break when students are getting ready for the new year. I will say though, the best deals are usually not directly at Apple's website. And you can usually find better deals at your local retailers like a Best Buy, a B&H or a Micro Center. All right, so now that you finally decided which MacBook you want to purchase, let's talk about the little accessories you can get for it. I made an entire video dedicated to that here, but I'll try to quickly summarize it. First, don't buy these little blockers for your webcam because they can actually damage your MacBook. There's a light already built into the webcam that when the webcam is active, it will turn green and your Mac's menu bar will also tell you if a camera or microphone is on. So there's some built-in countermeasures for this already if you're the type to get paranoid that someone's spying on you. When you first open the box of your MacBook, you will get a MagSafe charging cable. That doesn't mean you have to charge with just MagSafe though. You can also charge it with 
other high-powered USB-C charging cables like you do with Windows laptops. If you just want a nice backup charging setup overall, I'd highly consider getting a nice high-powered USB-C cable for charging and a nice high-powered third-party charging brick. See, Apple's charging bricks are big and expensive. So while they are simple white bricks, they're not the most functional, just like their mice and keyboards. Apple's mice and keyboards are okay at best and are a pain if you wanna use them with non-Apple devices. So instead, I'd look into something more like Logitech's MX series of keyboards or mice. They're made really well, have charge ports in reasonable locations, have long battery life, and support up to three devices at the same time. They're great accessories in their own right, and I swear by them. I can't recommend them enough. Okay, so at this point, since we talked through all the different options, I think you're wondering what's the right choice for you personally. If you're on a budget, get a refurbished MacBook Air. Older M series MacBooks still work fantastically, but you can also find brand new M4 MacBook Airs for sale at great prices too. And this might get you really close in terms of pricing to those refurbished models. And in that instance, go for the M4 MacBook Air. But if you're not locked into a budget of under $1,000, I believe that 90% of people will be happy with the bog standard basic M4 MacBook Air. It's that good. I've been using the M4 Mac Mini and M4 MacBook Air as my main machine for a bit. And again, this was replacing my M3 Max MacBook Pro. And I have no complaints at all. Genuinely, when I say this, they're just that great of machines. Then there's the M4 MacBook Pro. But this is where it gets a bit more complex because the M4 MacBook Pro provides slightly better performance than the M4 MacBook Air, but it's bigger, it has a better screen, has a bigger battery, and has better speakers, but I genuinely think that you shouldn't get this unless you really feel like those things are important. That's a 60% price increase over the standard M4 MacBook Air. That's a brand new iPad alongside your MacBook Air for a single laptop. From there, if you're someone who makes a living using your laptop, the M4 Pro MacBook Pro is an awesome choice. It won't let you down. But again, for most people, I think it's overkill and even a bit overkill if you are a semi-power user. And lastly, there's the M4 Max MacBook Pro. It's a fantastic laptop, but it's really for the power users who genuinely need it, not for us regular folks. And by power users, I mean people whose jobs depend on having the fastest machines. Otherwise, you're just buying a laptop that's never really gonna make use of all the performance that you purchase. And at that point, it might be a waste of money. So that's everything you need to know about MacBooks without getting too crazy deep into MacBooks. I genuinely do think that most people would be fine. <laughs> and I keep repeating it with the M4 MacBook Air, but there are some valid reasons why someone would want to upgrade beyond that whether that be better screens, bigger batteries, whatever. What do you personally think though? Are there any reasons why you'd aim for a different model? Are the features that the Pro delivers over the airs worth the upgrade? What upgrades do you think are just worth it overall? I hope this video was helpful in your own journey. So leave down any comments that you have down below and I'll see you all next time. Bye.